Meanwhile, some of your loved ones are going through this ease. Meanwhile, maybe you are going through this ease and you're supposed to be the savior. I'm reminding you, God, that you said it was going to be a new you, a new year, a new you, and no matter what you're going through in your physical reality, no matter what temptations, whatever you might think that are outside of you, they're stemming from inside of you, God. And so to be accountable for your energy, it all starts with you having control over your mind, because as a man think it, so is he, God. But I want to share today on this particular live about how they have certain things in the physical reality that it kind of like um, hold your mind hostage, so to speak, that are released some chemicals like dopamine effects inside of you. Yeah, and make you get addicted or fall in love with a certain state of being when you're in that state and it's toxic. You know how like you, you hear or maybe even you'll see on TikTok people in those abusive relationships and you wonder, well, like, are they slightly retarded? Are they crazy? Are they that domicile? What's going on with them people? They know that they should have got out. Why did they stay so long, you know? Hey, hey, hey. Why, why did um, this person stay on drugs, so to speak? Why did this person, you know, eat until they got to this obese state of being and they got to be lifted out of their house? Well, God, you have inside of you chemicals that you can naturally secrete, you know, like dimethyltryptamine, like um, dopamine, and all of these different <laughs> chemicals that you can naturally release. Well, they have things outside. They're man-made things outside of you. That, 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 that help you create that effect and you get addicted on it. So it feels good sometimes when you're eating those cookies, those potato chips or whatever, you know, that that's making you gain weight. It feels good all the while clogging up your lymphatic system, all the while making you experience this ease and disharmony after you finish it, right? making you gain weight. It feels good, you know, to be addicted maybe to those cigarettes because of the nicotine, but all the while, it's affecting your lungs. It feels good, that dopamine feels good when you're in love in that toxic relationship. Oh, it feels really, really, really good. All the while, he's beating you. All the while, he's taking from you, and you not on your pedestal, God. <laughs> that temporary dopamine effect that you might get is costing you. And so I wanted to share with you how some things feel good, 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 and allow you to feel good at that time, but they're not good for the body, God. And so they have your mind hijacked, because if you think about it, when you own this little dopamine, you have this little dopamine release when you're in love, nobody can't tell you nothing. You know how they say he or she must be whipped, so to speak. Nobody can tell a whipped person nothing in that moment in time, because they have to go through the emotion. They got to go through it, because love is like a drug it is a chemical release that you can release but when you chaotic with your love when you don't even understand the power of your love when you don't understand your mindset you don't realize that love your love is the most powerful form of energy that there is but on the other side of your love <laughs> is fear is the unknown is you not knowing yourself so when you over there fearful not knowing yourself and in the unknown you don't realize <laughs> that your love inside of you can heal you and get you to the other end of the spectrum. So in the physical reality, let's say, for example, the people that's, um, and I want to talk about physical and entire uh, spirits are here. Let's say, for example, the people that's getting up in the morning. Let's, let's do a little morning, morning walkthrough of somebody that may be on low frequency and they don't understand why. So they get up in the morning. The first thing that they're going to go do is they're going to wash their face and they're going to brush their teeth, right? Now, I want to share with you some things that some things is inside of certain two paces, right? Like in your, your, your crest and, and um, <laughs> in your Colgate type two paces. There is inside of that something called fluoride. And this fluoride that's inside of it, sometimes we'll even go to the dentist and we'll get the extra fluoride treatment. 
And in getting this, and some of your insurance companies don't even pay for you to get this extra fluoride treatment. It may be about eighteen to twenty dollars more. And so, but you want it. They, they tell you that in the office at the dentist that oh, it's gonna help them brighten your teeth. But it's the same thing that they. Um, that's equivalent to kind of like rat poison, so to speak. It is the same thing that's going to allow you to stay in a domicile type position. It is the same thing that's going to allow you to stay with your eye closed because it's going to keep your pineal gland calcified. So you got your fluoride and you think nothing of it. You think it's doing something for you. I would encourage you today to switch your toothpaste to something that does not have fluoride in it because the fluoride is making you domicile. The fluoride is something that is preventing you to see again with your first eye, God. And so you 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 be like so domiciled and in the zombie like state of being. Because once you put this thing on your tongue or when it reaches your tongue, whatever touches your tongue is gonna penetrate throughout the body because you have the saliva delivering it everywhere, right? So I would encourage you first of all. To change your toothpaste. Really, if you can tolerate, if you can get over the tolerance of how things taste and, and, and be more focused on what it's doing for the body, really, you don't even need to use those commercial toothpaste. Really, you could do oil pulling with coconut oil. You could do oil pulling with coconut oil, and you could mix two drops of the alchemist oil with your oil pulling, and that's gonna take care of your gum issues because it's really not about. It is not about your teeth as much as it's about your gums. Your gin divide as your cavity comes because your gums being affected, right? So you could do oil pulling. Another thing you could do is you could brush your teeth with Bob's Red Mill. Sodium bicarbonate, which is a pure baking soda. And you don't even need to fool with the people toothpaste. Or you could learn how to make toothpaste on your own, God. You could be an independent God. <laughs> a God that's taking care of his body and not dependent upon commercial things to take care of you. But nonetheless... If you choose to not make it and not, not get your own sodium bicarbonate, try a toothpaste that does not have fluoride inside of there. Because it's stunting your growth, God. Because it's closing. It's, it's something that's keeping you domicile and keeping your third eye or your first eye, as we should know it, closed. And that way you have ears and you are not hearing. And you have eyes and you are not seeing. It is equivalent to being that drunken person in love, right? It's equivalent to being that foolish person that's in love that you can't tell them nothing because they whip. You can't tell them nothing because they ain't hearing you anyway. Because they have other chemicals that's being secreted. They have they have fluoride inside of their body that's keeping them dumb as hell. Like you tell them something, you ever talk to somebody and everything that you told them just went over their head and you're like, dang, what, are you in there? What's, what's going on with you? I'm talking about that. <laughs> Love is connected with all of the seven chakras and seven hormones all at the same time. You are so right about that, tag nine. Unconditionally is the way. You're right about that. So this person, let's go back to this person. This person starts off their day. Now I just told you the person just woke up and they walked them in the bathroom and they brushed their teeth. And they had the fluoride and they toothpaste. And then after they brushed their teeth, they decided to go up in the kitchen to, to do something else that made them feel good, maybe. Maybe what's the first thing that a lot of the people like to do to make them feel good? It's the thing that they do in the office. It's the thing that they might do before they leave the house. They got to get their morning coffee. Hey, Dion, thank you for being here today, babe. They got to get their morning coffee. Okay, so now I'm holding you accountable, God. You just had the fluoride in your toothpaste that made you down, Masala, and I ask that you change your toothpaste, God, because we're going to need your first eye open, God, because your first eye is, is how you're going to reign up in here in the physical reality. The first eye is your, is, to, is like the window to your soul. <laughs> it's how you connect with your inner being because I'm, I'm, we're going to need that open, so no, no fluoride treatments at the dentist's office and fluoride-free toothpaste. But when you walk up in that kitchen, God, <laughs> now we're talking to the gods that ain't they 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 ain't that ain't all the way wide open because once you get wide open you can do anything and a lot of people mentally can't jump here so i gotta teach you at your lower self how to get here in the physical and then when you get here all the way in the spiritual then nothing shall by any means harm you you could do what you want to do then god but in the beginning you it's like you in training for it right so when you in training for it, you gotta you 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 gotta manipulate the energy 
by going towards the things in the matrix that are coded with higher frequency. So, God, that means you're going to coughing. Yeah. Hey, Ms. V and Solo, thank you for being here. Your morning coffee is very ascetic as far as this code in, in the matrix is concerned, God. So now you got your morning coffee, which is ascetic, but you like it because, of, you know, you've been programmed in the matrix uh, since you at your lower self right now and you haven't got back on the throne and you ain't reigning just, just, just yet. You created, you created by default, though, by your negative way of thinking and your negative lifestyle. You're creating the things that you don't want just yet. But I'm trying to teach you, God, how to create the things that you do want and how to manipulate the things in the physical reality, consume them, <laughs> edify your church, increase your frequency, and then you'll be able to do whatever you want to do then. But in the meantime, your coffee, God, is very ascetic. So you're drinking coffee and then maybe you put sugar with back to that dopamine effect that I was just talking about. Then you put sugar in your coffee. Oh, that white sugar, it make you really feel good. It make you feel sweet and tingly on your tongue, don't it? But yeah, it's addictive. It's almost worse than being on crack, God, because now you're addicted to it. You're addicted to it. It becomes a stumbling block in some people's life so much that they become obese that sugar and lo and behold if you incorporate your little white cream you know your little your little cow puss that you like to put up in your morning coffee so now you got acidic coffee you got sugar that's creating a dopamine effect and then you put a little cow puss and mix it all together and you say that that's gonna give you energy god you went to the lowest frequency you went real real gotta low in order to get energy okay let me tell you what it's gonna do god it's gonna make you feel good temporarily yeah, you're going to feel good. You, 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 you're going to get that caffeine boost. The energy is going to speed you up, but then it's going to let you down. It's going to crash you later, God. It's going to affect your adrenaline gland, God. It's going to dehydrate you. Yeah, that's what it's going to do. And then, and then after you get real, real addicted to it, yeah, it's going to feel good. But you ever paid attention to the people in corporate America? That's where I come from. And I used to watch them. Them people used to be shaky. <laughs> they had to have their co morning coffee. They couldn't function. They got to a, place, a state of being where they couldn't even function without their coffee. And I'm looking at the people like, hey, let the coffee do it now. Why don't you put the coffee down? But no, it's not that easy to put the coffee down because now you have the dopamine effect. From the coffee, you have the caffeine in there. You got the sugar, the AKA crack, but it's so so it's so hard for you to put the coffee down. So you will kill yourself slowly, God. But it feels good while you're doing it, though. <laughs> oh, it feels so good, don't it? See, these are the things in the physical reality that's hijacking your mind. These are the things in the physical reality that is not allowing you to be accountable for your energy. That is not allowing you to have no mindfulness. How you going to be still and know that I'm God when you can't even literally be still? Because you shake in from the coffee. Because you didn't have your morning crest and your morning Colgate and it, it, it calcified your pineal gland. So now we woke up, we got, we brushed our teeth with that fluoride. We get one in the kitchen and we didn't have our coffee. We, we, we got our dopamine effect. We, we acting like we feeling good, but really, we out of balance with our own self. Yeah, white sugar is a class one drug like Coke. Yeah, 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 definitely. Drink ginseng, no sugar. Just had to give out a shout. Hey, Thomas, thank you for passing through, babe. Thank you for passing through. Great day. It's always a pleasure to hear and see you. Stay blessed, continue working. Yes, I will. I will. Food for thoughts. Yes, food for thoughts. Hey, Peter, thank you for coming through today. So then we go out. We, we ain't left the house yet, and we shaking. We ain't left the house yet. We got our fix for our coffee, our pineal gland, nice and shit. Then we go out, and we, maybe we have some breakfast. Yeah, we gonna have breakfast. We gonna stop maybe at a cafe on our way to, to work, and or, have, or bring our breakfast, or make breakfast at home. We gonna do our grits and our eggs, you know, you know, the regular stuff. We gonna do our grits and our eggs. And our bacon and our biscuits with some jelly beans, right? Oh, it tastes good. It tastes so good. Now, we just woke up from a fast. We were detoxing with our, in our sleep from a fast. I'm holding you accountable, God. Because you got to take care of your avatar self, God. You got to take care of the physical. 
because <laughs> it correlates with the spiritual. So now we woke up and we got our, we, we, we need to pray. We got our grace because we need something that's going to stick to us. That's what we say. Yeah, because we hungry. We say after we came off of our fast, while our body was detoxing at night, we, we, we hungry and we got to eat. We got to eat. We, 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 we got to have meat on our bones, we'll say. Okay? Right? We need our sausage or bacon or whatever you call it and our scrambled eggs in our grits. So, <laughs> the eggs, if any of you out there with cholesterol issues, that's a gangster way to get it in no time. Our bacon, our pork, the pork being the, the, the most toxic animal, we, we, we went to the toxicity again. We went to the most toxic animal to consume that does not release <laughs> that does not sweat, that holds on to its toxins. Oh, but the bacon smells good. There we go back with the dopamine effect that I'm talking about. Oh, it feels good to consume these things. While the very thing that you're consuming is tearing you up. The very thing that you're consuming is allowing parasites to live and take over your body. The very thing that you're consuming. Oh, but the smell of bacon. Oh, I just love the smell of bacon. And then we go with, with our biscuits, our biscuits with our high fructose corn syrup. Uh-oh, our high fructose corn syrup inside of our biscuits with our jelly, which has the sugar again and the high fructose corn syrup. All of these things, it feels so good to consume these things. This is why mindfulness is so important in this matrix, God, because everything that you're doing is playing tricks with your mind because all of this here is mine. Right? So now, now we got our high fructose corn syrup. And so if you know anything about high fructose corn syrup, it ain't sugar. It ain't just a, rig, a different kind of sugar. It's actually a chemical too that you're consuming. And most often than not, that be the thing that stops you from wanting to work out, that stops you from wanting to pay attention because the dopamine effect makes you feel good. And I don't give a darn what they say. I'm going to have my snacks. You say, I'm going to treat myself. You say, yeah, because it feels good to slowly kill yourself, slowly separate yourself from the love of God. And when I'm talking about the love of God, I'm not talking about the love that you should have for yourself, God. So what is this high fructose corn syrup? High fructose corn syrup is a chemical that you might be consuming in your little sweets and your little Hawaiian punches and in your little, in your little cakes and candies that tricks your brain into thinking that you're hungry when you're really, really full. So them people that's making this stuff, this commercial stuff for you, they know this about you. See, they know a little bit more about you than you know yourself, about yourself, because you're at your lower self right now, God. So they messing with your mind. So your mind is literally playing tricks on you. And so they'll even throw it in your face and they'll tell you, I bet you can't eat just one. <laughs> Some of them on TV will tell you, I bet you can't eat just one. Why is it that you can't eat just one though, God? Because they're playing with your mind with that high fructose corn syrup. It's taking you on a high. It's making you feel good. Oh, wow. Destroying yourself. Hey, cake scasm. I see you there. Thank you. Thank you. The, the vegetables are genetically modified. We round out pesticides in them. Stay away from corn. Yes. Stay away from corn. Peter, no. Peter, no. <laughs> Peter, no. I do. I don't consume corn at all. They have all kind of different things on the different chemicals on the vegetables, like Peter was saying. Hey, Dream. Thank you for being here, baby. So this is, you just, you just made it to breakfast, God. You just made it to, to breakfast. So I'm trying to show you your toothpaste. I, I, I walked only to your toothpaste and your coffee and you only made it to breakfast with your high fructose corn syrup. You ain't get to your lunch. You ain't get to your dinner. You didn't get to the crash that's going to happen later on through the day because you went on a high with the coffee, the aesthetic coffee first thing in the morning. So this is why it's so hard for you, God, when you set these New Year's resolutions and you talk about, oh, it's going to be a new year and a new me because just like Peter was saying you got you got you got pesticides on your food and stuff 
You, you got you got your high fructose corn syrup and your breakfast and stuff, and you don't even know about these things. You got this fluoride. You're just thinking, oh, I'm buying this toothpaste because you know it's, it, it, it it looks cool, it's affordable, it's, it's readily available, and you know it's freshening my breath. And so I'm gonna keep on buying this. This is my brand right here. And you never took the moment, God, to to know thyself. <laughs> You never took a moment to turn that thing around and see what you was putting inside your body, God. You didn't do that. You just went on with the motions. And maybe it was just something that you just picked up because maybe they didn't just told you to. Maybe that's the one that your mama used to use when you was a little girl, little boy. And you just, just this generational lack of knowledge, lack of knowing of self, and you just repeat in that cycle. And maybe you never used to like coffee, but when you got into corporate America and it got cold during the winter time, and then you just was walking with your coworker, and you just you just listened to them, and then you tried it for one time, and it gave you that burst, and it, it, it gave you your little dopamine effect, and you just got hooked on that. And maybe you really didn't even want to smoke cigarettes when you were a little girl or a little boy, but you, you, you didn't know yourself at that pivotal moment, and so you just wanted to be cool, you wanted to look cool, and smoke those cigarettes and then you got addicted to it and now it's so addictive it gives you that dopamine effect that feel good effect but god what i'm trying to tell you is that you are god and all of these effects that's happening outside of you you could cre create those effects inside of you <laughs> by yourself without the manipulation through mindfulness god yeah because those are your superpower because guess what as within so without, so even, even when I'm talking to you about all of these herbs, you get to a state or a place of being in your journey where the herbs, everything, the psychedelics and, and the, the mushrooms and all of these things, the dimethyltryptamine, all of these things that the herbs can do outside. The biblical text is telling you, greater work shall you do, God. <laughs> but that's when you're on your throne again and that's when you know yourself again. But the purpose here of this particular video is trying to teach you how, how you have all of these things outside of you that are mimics of you. And you get hooked on those things and don't get hooked on yourself that's aching to you not knowing yourself. And then you walk around and you wonder why you're in a state of dis-ease and disharmony. I'll tell you why, God, when you're at your lower self, you're in dis-ease and disharmony simply because you don't know yourself. Simply because you never sat with yourself. Simply because you never sat and, and practice mindfulness because mind is all, all is mine. And this is why meditation, you might think it's corny, you might think it's boring, but this is why meditation and mindfulness is so important. Because if you had mindfulness with yourself, you have mental clarity, you have attention span, you have a better quality of life because you can tell your mind, no, we're not having no high fructose corn syrup. No, we're we, we, we not going down that rabbit hole today. No, 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 no. We just woke up from a fast and we're going to give ourselves something that is going to transition us to a full meal. No, it's not time to eat. No, I'm not going to I'm not gonna sit here and brush my teeth with fluoride. I'm not going to be bamboozled at the dentist's office for them telling me that I need a fluoride treatment when I know that it's making me domicile and I need my first eye, a.k.a. my third eye, to be wide open. <laughs> wide open at least I don't even know myself but that's all mindfulness though mindfulness mindfulness and knowledge of self even if you don't know these things even if you don't even understand what fluoride is but mindfulness and knowing myself from a cellular level when I put something on my tongue mindfulness will say wait, 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 hold up mm, something in there something in there that I don't need to even consume no more because it didn't feel good to the cells of my body because I love myself, aka my cells, C E L L S. And because I love myself and my cells and myself, because I have this connection with myself, I know myself. And because I know myself, I feel myself. Because I love myself, I understand myself. Because isn't true love? Love is understanding. I understand myself. And I understand when my myself is giving me a slight headache when I consume this white sugar. I understand myself. And because I understand myself, I love myself. And because I love myself, I'm not going to do that to myself. 
See, we be having, we be talking on the TikTok to talk about these chaotic relationships because they always want to talk about men and women on TikTok. Like this is the holy grail. We talk about these relationships with a partner, but what about the relationship you have with yourself? What about the relationship that you have with food that you can't get out of? The relationship that's dragging your ass. Yeah, that one with food. Because you don't have mindfulness. The relationship that have you getting up in the middle of the night and go and get a pickle. Just go and get some ice cream. That relationship. The relationship that you're spending your money on. <laughs> It feels good in that moment because you got a dopamine effect, just like the toxic relationships. You're spending your money on, and it's tearing you up on the inside. It's pushing you farther and farther away from loving yourself or understanding yourself. But you're addicted to it. And then you come up with crazy excuses like, oh, you only live once. And oh, I'm going to die one day anyway. What do you mean, God? You're going to spend your physical reality. You can't afford to experience yourself to get to know yourself. But you'd rather spend your physical reality <laughs> limiting yourself, not tapping into your true power. What do you mean you only live once? You've been here for eons and eons and eons trying to remember yourself. What do you mean you don't care? What do you mean you don't love yourself? That means to me that you don't allow something to hijack your brain, God. What it means to me is really what you, you, you telling me your weakness, God. But today on this life, let the weak say I am strong. You telling me your weakness as far as mindfulness is concerned. Look, look, I don't surrender to the food. God darn it. I don't surrender to the high fructose corn syrup. God darn it. The fluoride is in my toothpaste already. I'm already down myself. I'm already shaking and twitching from this coffee. I'm already hooked on this thing. This relationship and I can't get out. It's just like the people that's in the chaotic relationship that, that you, try, you wish that they would want something better. Just like that person, maybe that family member, we all have one that tried or experienced some drugs and you just wish that they would do something and you try and uh, you're outside of them. They're God and they're reality. You're trying to get them to rehab. You're trying to get them to become a better version of themselves, but they got a want it for themselves. So they got to practice their own mindfulness. You got to practice your own mindfulness over there, God, in your kingdom. <laughs> It reminds me in the name of my business it's called Salt of the Earth Publishing and I'm often reminded of you know, the scripture in the biblical text where it say we are the salt of the earth but if the salt loses its savior wherefore will it be salted it'll be good for nothing but to be trampled over by men and so for those of you who are on this slide that may be struggling with food addictions don't be trampled over by men because you are don't let the lower frequency, the lower being, consume you. <laughs> Get back on the throne by practicing your mindfulness because all is mine. Your ability to withstand from these things, it's all is mine. Yesterday I was drinking a tea. Oh my God, this is tea. It's a good detoxing, revitalizing, bitter, 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 bitter tea. I'm talking about bitter. Because <laughs> I'm still on my little 90 day phase. I think I'm on say day 71 or 72, somewhere right there. I try not to keep up with it, but I know I'm done on the 29th of this year month. But I was drinking this here tea, and oh my God, had I not ever practiced mindfulness, I would have spit that tea out. See, I done got to a place in my journey with my bitter teas. I could just take it because I consume things for my for like vital nutrients, like right. <laughs> I consume things for, for minerals, like, right, vitamins, right? That's what we're getting that from. So I'm drinking this here tea, and I'm like, this is the stuff is so nasty. But I'm thinking to myself about how it revitalizes my body. I'm thinking about to myself, because I know myself, and as soon as I took a little sip, I was like, oh, yeah, this, this, I got I to gotta drink this here. I got to drink all of this here, because once it was it landed on my tongue. I knew that it was good for me. Yeah. It 
was almost like a little party on a cellular level was going on in, in my body. This music touched my tongue. It was almost like, yay, she found this earth now. Let's wild out, like, right? And so I'm sitting there and I'm drinking, but I'm thinking about the day, back in the day, rather, when I was at my lower self and I wouldn't be able to do that. And I was thinking, I was like, well, what, what would be the difference? And I couldn't do that, and now that I can do it. And the only difference I could think of is that it's mindfulness. See, this is why mindfulness is so important. Mindfulness. Yes. Let me check to see these little comments before this one, before the call action on your own life. Release those unhealthy actions. Yes, I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. Okay, so, yeah. So, I was sitting here drinking it. And when I f finished drinking it, by the time I finished drinking it, it just knocked me out. Like, I, I literally went to sleep, like, right? And because this is a heavy detox that I'm on, because I'm, I'm doing my last week's, on my last week, I, I, I incorporated a couple of fruit smoothies, but only because I really, really like my um, sour sap uh, fruits that I've been able to get from this Asian market out here. I'm doing my fruit smoothies, and I'm doing my teas heavily, the really, really bitter, nasty ones, and then I'm done on the 29th. <laughs> but, but my mindfulness got me doing this here, so I woke up this morning. I woke up this morning, I used the restroom. And you know, when you're doing this type of detox that I'm on, you're cleaning, you're cleaning your lymph. And when you clean your lymph, your urine is gonna be a little darker. It ain't gonna be no little clear little urine. Matter of fact, if your urine is clear, baby, that means your kidneys ain't filtering. So anyway, so not only was mine past the yellow state, my urine is darker hue, almost um, like a rich gold and slightly hint of maybe brown like right so that's when you know you really get in sediments settlements you get in uh, lactic acid and uric acid and, and all of them fats and mucus that they're coming out and so when i urinated this morning <laughs> see this is my growth because of my mindfulness i'm just telling you my little testimony here and i urinated this morning and i, and I look back at my urine and i realized that the that the tea that i had consumed last night and that it was flushing me out i'm excited about these things because once upon a time in my journey I felt like I was just so weak. I felt like I had so much of sickness and disease. I felt like I was separated myself from myself. I felt like I was addicted one addicted to that one day um, high fructose corn syrup and that malt dextrin and all these things that was bringing havoc on my body. I felt like I was there. But today, my growth, because of my mindfulness, got me on the other side, got me attuned to the cells of my body, got me understanding what my urine is supposed to look like, got me feeling good, looking good, and knowing and understanding myself. Because is it love, understanding? <laughs> and so I came a long way, God. And if I look back on my spiritual journey from where I am now, I was in religion back then and I was just, just being controlled back then and I wasn't outside of my limited box of uh, a way of thinking and I was eating a little supper plates in the, in the, in, at the church and I was going to Popeye's for my two-piece spicy white with mashed potatoes and a jalapeno pepper and I used to like my little morning cereal full of sugar, full of high fruit fructose corn syrup and the so-called enriched meaning sprayed on minerals really you ain't even getting any of those with my little cow pus on the side because yeah i used to love my cereal with the cow milk at that moment in time but here i am now with mindfulness and my spiritual growth and having the activities of my limbs and my first eye aka my third eye is open having mental clarity about myself knowing myself being able to meditate being able to practice med meditation and mindfulness knowing myself even on a cellular level where I can literally speak to the cells of my body and I know that they hear me because I know that they are alive. I can consult with other people. I can create, I have a whole product line where I can create things to help people heal their body. So maybe if they continue to use my product, maybe it'll seep through the largest organ in their body and maybe it'll quicken them with minerals and give them mental clarity and give them a boost of energy and open up their first eye, aka their third eye, and maybe they can see God. <laughs> that's gross baby that's growth that's the journey that i've been on that since you are my reflection that i'm rooting for you to go on but you got to practice mindfulness 
So for those of you that have set a new year resolution that you're going to be going to the gym and create more assets, more cellular waste, because anytime you move your hands, anytime you exercise, anytime you lift in those weights, you are creating cellular waste. Because just like you, when you put food in your mouth, have waste, your cells of your body create waste too. And they go to be processed and filtered through your feet. So before you even go to the gym, I'm going to need you to practice mindfulness so that you can stay going to the gym. I'm going to need you to practice mindfulness so you could bring that mindfulness home with you from the gym and make sure you consume things that get rid of that lactic acid build up like your key limes, like your coconut oils. Yeah, get rid of that inflammation so that you can stay on the alkaline side. And so that you can continue to go to the gym because some people quit going to the gym because it gets so painful. It gets so strenuous on the cells of their body and they get so out of breath that, that, that their mind begins to play tricks on them and then they leave. Come Valentine's Day, the people that set them New Year's resolution, they be ready to hit the door and don't go back no more because they really didn't practice mindfulness to begin with. So if it's going to be a new year, baby, how about making it new you? And the only way that you're going to be able to make it a new you is by the renewing of your mind. <laughs> by the renewing of your mind. And so... By renewing your mind, thought by thought by thought. And that means, that means physical. That means your spiritual. You know, they have in the biblical text, they have a, um, so, so I want to share with you how these things are intertwined. How as within, so without. So in the biblical text, they'll say things, um, they'll say things about like the, the marriaging of the bride and the groom. And so people, people in the physical, they might, they might think, oh, okay, that's me and a man. You know, that's something outside of me. They say, well, okay, okay. If it's outside of you, then they have to be inside of you too. So if you're going to interpret the biblical text about the marriage of the bride and groom, and then it's, it's a union or with a man and a woman and we'll go put together and let no man put something. Well, guess what? Also within you too. And so what does that mean inside of me? That means the marriage of the bride and the groom could also be applied to your right and left side of the brain hemisphere becoming one. And that's when you are no longer just a uh, <laughs> conscious being but you connected with your subconscious mind too that knows all things <laughs> yeah and so i say that to remind you also of a, a scripture in the biblical text where they talk about the power of the tongue you know you know the power of the tongue the tongue how it could how it it could give life or it could destroy you in so many words to say in the, in the biblical text but if you're going to think about that as far as your spoken word is concerned, <laughs> life and death also is in the power of what you put on that tongue too, God. Yeah. Because there have things out here in the physical reality in this matrix that will destroy you, God. Yeah. Because you put it on your tongue. So, so, so if we're going to think that, that life and death is in the power of the tongue out there, for your spoken word that's going to your subconscious mind and yielding to you the things that you want then let's think about the physical aspect of the power of that tongue too god because when you get hooked on your fluoride god you're gonna want some more when you get hooked on your coffee your acidic coffee when you get hooked on your sugar your 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 crack you're gonna want some more you're gonna be feeding god so there is life and death in the power of what you put on your tongue. You know, most often than not, we are killing ourselves with that fault because once we get hooked on these things, it's really, really hard if we didn't practice mindfulness how to get off of those things. Yeah, because you're young in Christ. You're just a little babe in Christ, so to speak. So, so you, don't, you don't have the mindfulness yet. You never sat with yourself. So now it's going to be a little bit harder when you get hooked on your high fructose corners here. Then what do you do? Then what do you do? You on a high. How could I come over to you and tell you why you on your high? Girl, stand up, get it together and put that away. No. Because you won't even hear me. No, because you, you have eyes and you ain't even seeing me. No, because you come to my life and you ain't ready to even digest this because you don't even have good soil, God. Because you don't even have the attention span, God. 
but you did not come here in physical form to be at your lower self always, God. You came here to get into the new contract, into the new testament, and remember that you are the Christ conscious one. You came here to be resurrected again, God. When you gonna rise? When your kingdom gonna come? When you gonna get your mind together because all is mine? When you gonna renew your mind, God? <laughs> when you're going to get to know yourself. Every year you have a New Year's resolution. And every year you fall short. How about making that last year the last year that you do that to yourself? Because you only doing yourself. You only stumbling your own growth. You only not getting on your throne and guess what's happening to your reflections? They looking for a savior. And because you ain't never saved yourself, then you cannot be on the throne and call yourself saving nobody. You can't save your children. You can't save your mother. You need to be the light. Because that's what you came for to do and to be. To be that light. To shine your light in a world of darkness. You came for it to be able to see. While in the darkness, yesterday, come on now, gods and goddesses, step into your power. Yes, glow. Yes, glow. Yesterday, uh, I, I had volunteered because this person had been so, so good to me and had helped me so much when I moved to Arizona. I say, I say, goddess, this person had, had helped me so much when I moved to Arizona. You know, when I came to do my closing and I was here in Louisiana, this person was bringing me here and there. And he was going on, a, coming from a trip yesterday. And even though I had appointments and everything, I got to go in 15 minutes because I have an appointment today too. Even though I had appointments and everything, um, the um, this person needed somebody to go pick him up from the airport. And I was like, oh yeah, please let me do it. I just want to get back. I don't want you to get an Uber out there, I promise. And so I went to go pick up this person and they had a friend that they were coming in town with. And, you know, I was just asking how they trip, how their holidays and everything was. And, and I really wanted to do that for this person. But the friend, I didn't know the friend who was in the backseat of my car. And the friend was, I was getting to know this friend. And I was just asking him, how about, tell me, what do they like to do? And the friend liked to spit kids. And the friend was an older lady. She was like a little, you know, elder lady. Or maybe, maybe six or seven, eight year, year old, or old lady, right? And so she liked to bake cakes for everybody in the neighborhood. She was telling me the story about... How her, her children was telling her, don't bake cakes for sister and such because such and such has diabetes and they die and then you need to stop giving them cakes, right? And she was just laughing at it and I thought nothing of it because I don't, I don't, I don't push my, my knowledge and my knowing on other people, right? These are the messages that need to be pushed out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. But some people not read it, but everything perfect. It's okay. So anyway, the, pe the person in the back seat all of a sudden just got a little asthma attack. I said, asthma attack, and I mean, and I'm driving the car, and I don't know the person in the back of the, in the, in the car, and the person that, that I didn't, that I knew was a retired nurse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, sometimes, and no, 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 I'm not throwing salt on this person, but when you're in the medical industry, you understand medicine, and you understand to that level of what you've studied in that industry, like, right, but I'm different from her, and, and I study holistic health, like, right, and so, she was, the, the, the nurse who I knew was saying, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, meanwhile, this lady that was in the backseat of my car, she was wheezing, wheezing really, really heavy, and I'm like, are you okay? I mean, I just met her a couple of minutes ago, and I'm like, what, what, she, she has asthma? And so she was wheezing to the point, it was like, <gasps> I was like, you, 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 you have something for that? You know, and she took out a little breathing, little pump or whatever. And it was when they were saying that they didn't know, and then they started saying, um, it must be the saying. Because I'm in Arizona, I'm in the desert, and so sometimes we have little sandstorms, and you know, our, you know, our little area in the period when that sandstorm is going, you know, it must be the air we just got here, and where did this come from, and da 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 da, and it, I'm like, the air? No! <laughs> you know, I had to say something at that point. No! It's not the air! She's full of mucus! I can't hear it! You, and I say to the person who's a nurse, I'm like, you don't hear that? What do you mean you don't know? That's milk. 
ass. We got to get the mucus out of her. You know, and I go into that. I was like, okay, you know, not to push my knowing and what I know on this person, but this person it needed this information. And I was like, wait, wait, you, you, you don't want you have at home. We, we could stop at my house before I bring you where you're going and I can give you some of these herbs. I can give you this and that and third. But do you have this at home? And do you have that at home? And you know, you, you need to give her such and such because such and such is going to help to to destroy that mucus and allow her to breathe a little better. You know, and she could still take a little breathing pump and she could do this and that and third. But you got to get that mucus up out of there. But here's the thing. Sometimes in our journey, when we, when we don't know and we're domiciled, in our domicile state to be, we'll begin to blame it on the air. And it must be because it's cold outside that I got sick. And it must be because I did da 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 because I got sick. And it must be because of the saying, no baby, it must be because of what you put inside of your body. You the cake lady, remember? You addicted to the sugar. Remember? Oh, come on now. I know you're experiencing your dopamine effect, but come on. You gotta know that you just consumed the drug. You just did an overdose of the drug. You see what I'm saying? You can get so into your lifestyle that you consume so much of that diet. Till you get to a point where you can no longer breathe and you're sitting there walking, you're walking around talking about you don't know how, you don't know that you was on drugs. Didn't you prepare the needle? Didn't you prepare the sugar? Didn't you digest the high fructose corn syrup? Weren't you on the high? How could you not know? Because your mind has been hijacked. respectfully there's a scripture in the biblical text that says that fool despise wisdom because they don't be wanting to hear they rather blame the sand they better they rather blame oh I got this from my mama and being accountable and becoming the change but I dare you, God, because you are here for purpose. See, they had something that left this here alive. Hey, Big T, they had something that left this here alive because they didn't have the soil. Because maybe they were on the trip, the dopamine trip. Maybe they were on the high from the high fructose corn syrup. Maybe they didn't consume so much of the fluoride today in their domicile position. But I dare you, God. I know you that are here, you have some soil. A soil enough to at least listen to allow this information to be downloaded in your subconscious mind to use when you are ready. Soil that is rich enough to absorb and not just listen. Maybe, maybe your soil is so rich that you allow this seed to be rooted inside of you and to take root and to grow. And to pay attention to what you're consuming via your skin, via your mindfulness, via your mouth, God. Because in all you're getting with this information that TikToks allow you to get with these influencers, I want you to get an understanding of yourself, God. I want you to get to know yourself, God, because love is understanding. I want you to be accountable for your energy and stop making excuses that it is this, that is this, that is this. No, God, life is happening through you, not to you, God. Practice mindfulness. That's the beginning of your new year. To practice mindfulness where you could just look upon a thing and you could tell your mind, no, we're looking at this dot on this wall right now. We're not going to worry about nothing else. All of the problems, all of this so-called illusion is gone. No, I'm going to hold this thought, this momentum of this here thought of me breathing, of me hearing my breath. And I'm going to keep my eyes on that dot on that wall. And you're going to do this for about three minutes. And that's going to be the beginning phase of you practicing mindfulness. We ain't worried about who looking at us. We ain't worried about the phone ringing. We don't even hear that thing. All we hear is my, my breath. All we feel is my heart. And all we see is that dot. Get back over here, mind. I'm practicing mindfulness. This is the beginning of 
renewing your mind because once you learn to control your mind you can tell your mind no we are not consuming no high fructose corn syrup no more no we are staying away staying away from the genetically modified things we're getting organic things because we need this life force we need the cells of our body to be renewed we need life we are like beings we need our mental clarity back we need to connect back to our inner being we came forth to be god we need to be resurrected and this is how you resurrect the mind, God. <laughs> hey, TWA, thank you for being here. Mindfulness. Mindfulness. Mindfulness is going to help you on your job. Mindfulness gonna help you with that man. Mindfulness gonna help you with your inner being. Mindfulness gonna help you with your diet. Mindfulness gonna help you with your fears. It's gonna be mindfulness. Let this mind be in you. That's what the biblical text was telling you the whole time. If you religious on here looking at me, the biblical text told you from Genesis to Revelation that was all mine, all mine, all mine. By the renewing of the mind, it says. Finally, my brother, and it says. Whatsoever things that are just, whatsoever things that are pure, whatsoever things that are lovely, if there be any virtue in them, mindfulness, if there be any virtue in them, think with your mind, think on these things, it said, oh yeah, they get not robbery, think, 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 mindfulness, they get not robbery to be equal with God, mindfulness, <laughs> mindfulness, Woo. in the beginning, it says in Genesis, what's the word? Word is what? Mindfulness, the expression of thought, mindfulness. <laughs> mindfulness. Mindfulness. That will always a thing. This is a collective consciousness. Mindfulness. Source energy, mindfulness. Your inner being, mindfulness. Your first eye, third eye, mindfulness. All is mind. yourself without conditions and practice mindfulness. Mindfulness. That's the message. I have an appointment at 12 o'clock in six minutes, so I'm about to wrap this year up. I'll upload this here to my YouTube channel. For those of you who want to support me, um, support me by loving yourself better. Support me by understanding yourself. And in loving and understanding yourself, take care of yourself, take care of the kingdom of God. Visit my website at www.sorvillaryclub.org. There, if you want to practice mindfulness as it pertains to your health and wellness, purchase a sustained detox to get rid of old fecal matter that's lodged in your large and small intestines and all of that high fructose corn syrup and the chemicals that the GMOs did to you and the, um, the things that... Um, the acids of the coffee dear to your adrenal glands. Allow your adrenal glands to work properly again. Allow your kidney to function and release all of them toxins. Your kidneys, your lymphatic system is a black backup for your blood system. Purchase the same dis de discount. <laughs> Purchase the same detox for your body so that you can get iron, iron, aka oxygen, delivered to your brain again, God. Purchase this to get on the alkaline state of being, God. Purchase this for your well-being. After you purchase this, start exercising. Start exercising your mind, God, by paying, paying attention to a dot on the wall if you got to start there. And then you gravitate or uh, graduate from that state of being. And then maybe you could practice mindfulness and think about lovely things that you want to maybe manifest. Maybe you graduate from there. You can quantum jump into a state of being, God. What I'm saying here is increase your frequency, God. Do it physically and do it mentally you got to do it both ways because that's really where the union begins god that's really what you need to do to get back your superpowers god and consume lighter foods god 
consume like foods on the daily. Go on should be the days when you consume something just because it it, 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 it tastes good and you don't even know what it is. But yet it knocks you out, God. No, you need to be up. You need to be able to focus, God. Your food should be electrifying your body. Get you some electrolytes in your body, God. Drink you some spring electrolyzing water with electrolytes, a.k.a. sodium bicarbonates and pink Himalaya sea salt. That's going to electrify your body. That's going to increase your alkalinity. That's going to remove fungus. That's going to increase hydrochloric acid in your gut. If you need somebody to talk to, God, I'm your reflection. I'm actually, you created me via your subconscious mind accident a question to ask yourself why or what I need to do here I am you created me God so if you need to talk to me and do further consultations with me check out that link on my website as well I do one-on-one -on -one con consultations but for here in this right now very moment I need you to be God I need you to get on your throne because People are looking for a savior, and you're it. And you playing tic-tac-toe in the corner. You walling out over there. Meanwhile, some of your loved ones are going through this ease. Meanwhile, maybe you are going through this ease. And you're supposed to be the savior. You're supposed to be the generational break, generational person that's breaking all of those curses. By renewing your mind. But it starts there. Be the change. Stop blaming other things. Stop blaming genetics. Stop being the victim and be God all over again. I gotta go. Be blessed. This video was from my heart to yours. Bye Big D. Bye Molly Mo. Bye Goddess. Bye Tanya. Oh, Pinella. I appreciate all of you. I gotta go, babe.